Hello there, uh, I'm just going to show you my new Anglo-Saxon uh, musical instruments that I've uh, obtained. Uh, first of all, uh, my uh, ox horn here, not exactly a musical instrument, it would have been used probably to uh, signal um, in battles, but also to summon people to feasts uh, during the great sort of feast occasions. Um, there's records of people standing at doors uh, blowing the horns to summon in the, uh, uh, the people to come and uh, eat their meals after the harvest, say. Uh, and you're generally supposed to blow across uh, the corner of your mouth the, the end of the horn here. Get quite a, quite a, a note out of that. Um, then we've got the uh, the bone flute. Now, the, uh, many bone flutes have been found in Anglo-Saxon burial sites. Um, so we're talking here about deer, or a bit deer bone, um, sheep bone being the most common, other animals as well. Uh, and this is actually a ceramic sort of replica, uh, but the but it's very uh, very close to the original sorts of de designs with three three um, holes in like this and uh, you can use fingers at the end as well as on these notes holes in order to create uh, the desired effect. So, <clears throat> I'm no musician, but here we go. the drum. Uh, now with the drum we have a bit of an issue because not a lot of what uh, um, makes up a, a drum uh, would have actually survived uh, in the archaeological records um, and therefore it's a bit of guesswork really. It's possible that uh, the drums are quite a bit smaller than this and maybe they were half a drum with sort of um, skin on one side uh, but the general principle of wood with animal skin uh, seems fairly um, safe. This is rabbit skin, uh, and it can create quite a, quite a loud sort of uh, okay. Um, and then finally, uh, finally we have the lyre. Now, the lyre. Uh, this is a replica of. Um, Lyres that have been found. One of the most famous ones is in the Sutton Hoo uh, burial site of King Redwild of East Anglia, uh, and that uh, original lyre is in the British Museum. What's left of it, but it certainly shows the enough of the top and the, the bottom of the lyre for us to get a pretty good idea about how they were fastening the strings uh, together. The strings would have been some form of gut. Um, this is a nylon, as it's more uh, more uh, likely to last a bit longer, um, but. Uh, the the lyre itself is made of yew here, and there's various woods that were used in the uh, in, in the process. It's hollow, and you give your soundboard rather like a guitar, in fact. Now there's various ways to play it. They probably did use a plectrum, as an old Anglo-Saxon word, which means half nail, um, which um, describes sort of the plectrum they probably used. Um, so you could <coughs> strum across it with a plectrum, but you could also pick out individual notes. They use the technique probably uh, of deadening the of individual strings to change the uh, the chords that you were playing, uh, and you could play around with uh, the position of the finger on the string to give you a range of uh, of, of of sounds. sound out to it. Remember this would have been played in a mead hall or ale hall, uh, got some, lots of men feasting and drinking ale, making a lot of noise uh, and you need to make sure you could get heard. <laughs> 